you're into, you'll be blown away by the Go CBBC app. Me, 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 me. Two, three. Bigger. It's going to be the biggest musical challenge of any of their lives. Louder. Let's, let's unleash the full sound. I want you to sing it. Tougher. I am petrified. Anxiety and nerves just get to you. Yes, it's going to require every single person to go to a level of singing that they have not done before. Yeah. And I've got to drag it out of you. Oh, my God. The choir with all new military wives this Tuesday at 9 on an all-singing BBC Two. Good. A performance from Paloma Faith as the Strictly results are revealed. Find out who's through to next week's final at 7.20 tonight. But right now on BBC One, feeling festive with Connie Fisher. Hello and welcome to a very Christmassy Songs of Praise. I've come to the King's Church of England School in Wolverhampton, where, like many, they're preparing for their carol service. Now, many of the carols we sing today are traditional. We've been singing them for years. So I've come here to see if a new generation can come up with their very own carol from King's. Meanwhile, David's finding out about the famous carols from King's. I'll be with the choral scholars of King's College, Cambridge, preparing for the 60th anniversary of their world-famous carol service. We have the final part of our moving story of the World War I Christmas truce. We've got a little gift for you here today that we'd like to exchange with you. And I'm in Nottingham train station meeting the artist, hoping to show these commuters the true meaning of Christmas. We have a feast of festive music for you, so let's begin with the first of our candlelit carols. Well, I'm here at the King's Church of England School in Wolverhampton, where music is a really important part of their curriculum. So we thought we'd set them a challenge. Can the pupils write and compose a carol in just one school day? You up for this? Yeah! It's trying to get across that he's a king and he's meant This group of keen music students, made up of different ages, have already been composing for two hours. Some are working on the verses, others on the tune, and it's already beginning to take shape. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. They're making great progress, and we thought we'd bring along someone to help. He's the winner of BBC's The Voice. It's only Jermaine Jackman. Is I, is all. It 
to listen to that one. <laughs> hey guys, so how are you guys getting on? What have you written so far? Um, so we've caught with the whole of us two now. Mm -hmm. And what do carols mean to you guys? Well, I love music and it's a way for me to like sing praise and worship God, talk to God, but in, in a singing way and in, in a musical way. So let's listen to a bit of the chorus. Okay. He came for our salvation. The king is finally here. That's fabulous. All who heard it were amazed and said, see, because it's the same, and we thought mm -hmm. we wanted to switch up a bit because it's a bit repetitive. It's nice to have repetition because then it's going to be catchy and then people are going to walk away humming it and singing it in their heads and that's exactly like it because as soon as I'm hearing it, I'm there humming it in my head. I'm here. I already recognise the melody as it is. If you want to turn to one of our Bibles, Matthew verses 18 talks about the three wise men as well as the birth of Jesus Christ and I think we should look at some of those lyrics as well if, in case we wanted to change something. So. So do you mean, how are they getting on? They're getting on really well, but they still have to teach to the choir and perform it in less than four hours. Well, there's no pressure then. <laughs> well, one man who's enjoyed success writing hymns and carols is Graham Kendrick. And here's one that's become a real favourite. Over the past two weeks, we've been following a German and English family whose relatives kept diaries of their involvement in the World War I Christmas truce a hundred years ago. We exchange souvenirs. I pull a button off my coat. A German does the same. In that tradition, our families are also exchanging gifts, just as their relatives did. So, Anna Rose, I know that a hundred years ago our grandfathers were in this area, they'd been at war, but on Christmas Day they came together and they um, spoke and they exchanged gifts. And we've got a little gift for you here today that we'd like to exchange with you. It's actually a photo of um, Private William Tapp, our great-grandfather, mm -hmm. during that time. I also have a photo of my grandfather and um, I will give you this. Very interesting, very interesting, thanks. <laughs> I take it home to my father and oh, give yes. him it's a fine photo. But the truce was short-lived. Just months later, the last entry in Tapp's diary ends mid-sentence. They're still sending rifle grenades over. 
but we can get out of the way of them as the shot goes. It's thought that Private Tapp died in battle in April 1915, but he's not forgotten. Alongside 50,000 other British Empire soldiers with no known grave, his name is etched onto the Menin Gate in Ypres. Wow, I can't believe the number of names. It really kind of puts into perspective the, the amount of people that died in the war. Yeah, I wonder where William Tapp is. Oh, he's somewhere around here. So if we look for the uh, Royal Warwickshire Regimental uh, panel, we'll find him. Yeah, can you I see, can him? see him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I feel proud to see his name up there, that he's been recognised, that he gave his life. We see through his diaries that he, he, he had a real personality uh, and we find that, you know, really inspirational. He, he was quite a character, so, yes. Yeah, he was a real character. And so to see the name up there, it's quite special. I think he'll be proud of you. I always say, if they would say something, he would say, thank you for coming. Yeah, <laughs> that's nice to, nice yes, to hear. Yeah. Every evening on every single day of the year, traffic at the Menin Gate is halted and a ceremony is held to remember those who fell in the Great War. Tonight, both families are laying wreaths. It was quite nerve-wracking uh, because it's such a, an important ceremony. Um, but it was nice, though. It was, uh, it was nice to lay the wreath for, and, you know, for our great-grandfather and for all of the other soldiers who lost their lives who remembered. I am overwhelmed of all of this uh, ceremony. I just, it was very great. <laughs> so after all, the Christmas festival, the festival of love, caused the hated enemies to be friends for a short time. I will never forget this Christmas. Back at the King's School in Wolverhampton, there's just a few hours to go now before the pupils here have to perform the carol they've written in a day. And they've got all the ingredients for success. They're adding in instruments now, and Jermaine's busy working with them. I want to smile into the notes. Time is ticking, and the pressure is on. As well, because it makes, it makes the song sound brighter. And now David's off somewhere synonymous with carols. He's in Cambridge to meet the choral scholars of King's College.
For many around the world, it's the sound of carols coming from this very place that heralds the beginning of Christmas. I'm meeting some of the Cambridge students who sing in the choir for that famous service. When it comes to carol singing, they're at the top of their tree, watched by a global audience of millions. There's a lot of emotions going through you. You're terrified for a start because of the number of people listening and watching. And you're also excited because it's just great music and it's Christmas time. It sort of overwhelmed me my first year and I shed a few tears as we got into the stalls. <laughs> Um, wow. yeah. <laughs> There's a real sense of the sacred. Do you feel that when you're singing in there? It is quite moving, especially when you're singing repertoire you know very well, to sort of think about the impact it's having on the people there, what they might be getting out of it. I think, you know, one of the best things about Kings is that, you know, whatever sort of religious persuasion you, you come from, once you've walked in, in through those doors, you, you can, you know, embrace and engage with that, with that sacred element. But you're only students once. Do you ever not want to do it? Actually, for me, I find that it's quite a nice respite to actually come, in, come into the chapel to focus on something that's completely disconnected from work in a weird way, and it's, it's still hard work, but it's making something, being productive, um, but in, it's just in another capacity. Even in their spare time, these boys can't stop singing. Whether it's entertaining the crowds queuing for the carol service or performing as the King's Men in their own concerts. Have any guest singers? Is that allowed? For you, for you. We could do it. We could do it once. Yes. <laughs> should, we do, should we do Rudolph? Do you know Rudolph? I know it well. Yeah. I love it. Let's get it's a cheeky request and may not be a traditional carol, but I'd never turn down a chance yeah. to sing with the King's Men. We we'll give you a few bars, yep. and then we'll bring you in there. Fantastic. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer had a very shiny nose, and if you ever saw it, you would even say it glows. All of the other reindeers used to laugh and call him names. They wouldn't let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer game. <laughs> what a privilege to sing with these young musicians. You can see them in action on BBC Two on Christmas Eve and don't miss the documentary on Christmas Day marking 60 years of carols from Kings. Now the Kings men perform their own version of a much loved carol.
Now, we may not have cattle lowing, but we do have guns, and how many schools can brag about that? So we're here herding up inspiration for our carol. Meanwhile, Dan's in Nottingham, in another place you wouldn't expect to find a nativity scene. As Christmas fever reaches its pinnacle, we're busy rushing around trying to get everything done in time, but Jennifer Bell wants to remind visitors to Nottingham train station just what Christmas is all about. She set herself the task of painting a nativity mural in a day. Help! I don't know what I'm thinking. I've just got to do it. Uh, I've got to just get stuck in and keep going for 12 hours. For the early morning commuters, they've got something to look forward to when they return. It's in its early stages, obviously the nativity scene, I can see that. I'll be coming back tonight anyway, so I shall have a look. There's a lot of detail to put in, and I really, really do hope that I've got time to do it all. It's a huge challenge, but when Jenny gets going, she really gets in the zone. It's everything coming together, the, the imagination and your hands and your heart and your head. and I just feel completely warm inside. It makes me just happy. Jenny certainly isn't any traditional artist. Last year, she uh, painted this depiction of Jesus on a donkey at Hull Station. And as you can see, what she's painting today is equally striking. <laughs> so, Jenny, I hope I'm not interrupting, but that all looks quite magnificent. It's not completely a traditional scene, is it? It's, it's the basics, but contemporary and, and slightly off the wall so that people who come by won't think, oh, Christmas card, they'll think, oh, what? And then they might pick up the clues. That they, they are real people and Mary and Joseph were real people. The angel is real, the donkey is real. I mean, how, how does your faith actually motivate what you do here? Sometimes you, you feel that you're being spoken to. Sometimes images are presented and I don't know whether to say it's God giving me pictures or whether it's a combination of my imagination and experience and all that. But I do know that God is with me. I so admire artists. I don't know how you start and how... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> OK, suppose you do this is how you start. <laughs> That's how you start. You don't have to be too careful about it. Okay. Just blob it on. It's very nice to see it in the front of the station, so at least it's trying to let people know, don't forget Christmas and what it's about. Yeah. As day becomes night, it soon becomes apparent Jenny's work is affecting the passers-by in unexpected ways. We're addicted to technology, but technology doesn't really make people think, it doesn't really make people happy, whereas art, it's beautiful and you can look at it and really appreciate it. What made you start? Why were you, what, what do you think of this? I was just amazed that I actually started that from scratch and only did it this morning because like, the picture's so big. It's actually pretty sick how she actually looks like she spent a lot of time on the bag on the train. When and the, the baby. donkey actually looks real. My dad's been in hospital for seven weeks. I was so miserable and I've just been thinking so much about this and wanting to see the finished thing and it's, it's wonderful. I love it. With just 10 minutes to go, it's a frantic dash to the finish. <laughs> if you'd like to see Jenny's painting, it'll be at Nottingham train station for the run-up to Christmas. Worth. A 
daunting when you hear a beautiful carol like that to think that these pupils here are trying to create a carol in a day and perform it ready all three you feel like you can hit soprano ah! Jermaine Jackman's been working with them all day to get the best out of the choir so I heard that you guys want to talk to me about something here's the thing Jermaine we're short on boys and we need some more manpower. I don't know why you guys didn't ask me sooner. I've been there standing directing the choir for so long. I'm waiting for my time to time okay. to sing with you guys. So is that something so that's that you... a yes? Yeah! Okay, thank <laughs> you very much. Well, let's not waste the time. Let's go ahead and sing. <laughs> so it's really good that we get away from all of that that's going on out there. And really just honing on the lyrics, making sure that you're connected with what you're singing and what you're saying. And just, just having some air to breathe because you guys are the soloists and so you're standing up from the choir. You guys have stood out today and, and it's important that you should diaphragm properly and you make sure you're projecting the song out as well. Jermaine, yep. hey. sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> How are you getting on? We're getting on really well. Jermaine, do you think it would be brilliant to have a bit of a dance routine going on? A bit of a few clips? Yeah, a bit of a few yeah. clips. We've got to have some energy into it. One, two step. One, nothing, not, isn't, <laughs> <laughs> never any hurt to have a one, two step. So I think once we get back in there with the choir, we'll get honed in on our steps and as well as the lyrics as well. So it's a lot to remember, but I have the utmost confidence that you guys will pull through. Well, the moment has arrived. After just one school day, the choir is ready to perform their carol in front of family and friends. This is a story of the birth to Saviour King. He was brought to the earth as a poor boy had so much to give. Jesus, Jesus, the angels called his name.
is a lovely song, very heartwarming. It's been a mountain throughout the day, but the kids have risen to the occasion and they've done the school proud. I think this one is definitely my favourite carol because it's very catchy. I've been rehearsing it all day, so it's in my head, but yeah, it's really good. Oh, I've loved it today. Yeah. And you're back on Songs of Praise next week for the big sing. Yes, at the Royal Albert Hall with Catherine Jenkins, Solomon and the Swingle Singers. So, lots to look forward to next week. And now, for our final carol. This is one of the oldest and, I think, one of the best. A joyful celebration for us all to sing along with. Songs of Praise next week at 5.25 with a Christmas big sing. While Canterbury Cathedral is in need of repair tomorrow night at 9 on BBC Two. And Tuesday at 9, meet the new military wives who signed up for the choir. Our next here on BBC One.